Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about high mileage vehicles. And we're going to be showing off a 2000 Honda CRV whopping 285,000 miles on it. And as with any high mileage vehicle, the question is when is it too high? When is it time to get rid of it? Should I drive it till the wheels fall off? How much in repair should I actually do? Well, here's the answers. Okay, it's 20 years old now. Still doesn't look too bad here. Got an old door ding. Now the plastic on the door handle's broken, but you can still get in and out, so not necessarily something you got to do right away. You see the interior? The cloth seats are still in pretty good shape. A lot of room in the back on these things. Now this one's in because it needs a little maintenance. As you can see, the check engine light's on. It's running a little ragged, so I'm going to deal with that later. Now you can see the driver's window doesn't work anymore. But the passenger one does. And being a Honda, hey, the AC's still blowing cold. 20 years later and it's cold. Now the original crap of radiator's gone after market one's been stuck in. But, you know, the windshield's got a big crack in it. And the spare tire's missing, but hey, the glass still works. They got plenty of room in the back to hold stuff. This one's got a spare rim for some reason. No tire, just a rim. Door locks, well, they don't work anymore either. And the antenna's seen better days. Plus the paint's starting to fade on the top here some. But it still goes down the road. Let's check under the hood. Double overhead cam, four cylinder engine. Ultra reliable. And the transmission, Still the original transmission with all those hundreds of thousands of miles on it. It's a four-speed automatic with overdrive. Back then, Honda actually made really good automatic transmissions. Later they had a few problems, but these, they're pretty bulletproof. Any engine puts out a respectable 146 horsepower for a small vehicle that's got plenty of zip. But the main thing is, it lasts. They can run and run with just minor maintenance. Oil and fluid every 5,000 miles or so. Change the transmission fluid on a Honda. I say change it every 40,000 or so. There's just a little drain plug. A few quarts come out, you pump it back in. It's so easy to do. But being a Honda, always use the Honda automatic transmission fluid. Same thing with the power steering fluid. Only use the Honda power steering fluid. They all leak a little when they get older. This pump is leaking a little now, but fluid is cheap. Oh, when you look around, you can see the cooling fans have been changed. They're made in Chinese aftermarket ones, but they work perfectly fine. They cost a lot less. That's one of the big advantages of these CRVs. They sold tons of Hondas. Engines used in a bunch of vehicles. A lot of interchangeable parts. There's a huge aftermarket out there so you can get decent parts at a really good price and don't always have to go to the dealer to buy overpriced parts. Now even though it's 20 years old, it's still got a reasonably stylish front end. It's front wheel drive with disc brakes on the front. Just ignore the dent, that's not the car's fault. And back here, hey, it's still got drums. But there's nothing wrong with drum brakes. Realize that over 90% of your braking is your front brakes. So the back brakes, they're just mainly to keep it to sway in side to side. And drums are perfectly fine. My Celica's got discs in the front and drums in the back they don't have any problems and the drums actually last a really long time now if you do have an old car like this you got to decide how long should i keep it well in the case of this one sure it's got 280,000 miles but the engine is still strong the transmission's still strong the ac still blows cold yeah some of the windows don't work the power locks don't work anymore the vehicle still goes good if let's say the engine starts to get a problem rods are knocking or the transmission starts really slipping and not working right then you think gee do i really want to put thousands into this thing and probably the answer would be no you wouldn't but this is a honda they probably make the best engines in the world for the money and like i said this particular automatic transmission it didn't have any problems i got a customer's one of these that's got 500,000 miles on it the original engine and the original transmission so they could definitely last a long time now if you don't mind broken door handles but they still get in and out 
A few dings here and there. And a cracked windshield. These things actually do have an advantage in a vehicle. It's what everyone calls a beater car. You don't worry about a little ding here and there. It's already got the dings in it. The windshield's already cracked. So what if it gets another crack? And stuff that, if you're willing to live with it as a beater car, maybe just a work car to commute in, nothing wrong with driving one of these until the wheels fall off. And speaking of wheels, let's close the hood. Take it for a little spin. And yeah, typical, huh? The ignition key's worn some. You gotta jiggle a little bunch. <laughs> a lot of jiggling. There we go. Now, as we can see with the check engine light, there's a little problem. So it's not gonna run perfect, but it still goes and it shifts fine. Give it a little gas. Still got a little get up and go to it. And yeah, when you corner, you can feel a little bit of slop. And you gotta kind of counter steer a little so it goes straight. And now when you hit bumps, hey, it's a worn vehicle. You're gonna feel them clunking around a little. And you hear various road noises, but the whirring and stuff is normal. That's just older bearings, they're not worn out yet. And you know, you hit the bumps, you hear clangs and stuff, but hey, when these things are new, they're not the greatest riding vehicles anyways. You can hear the struts banging around when you hit bumps. Hey, yeah, it's worn, but it's not unsafe. You're not gonna be driving this thing 150 miles an hour for normal in-town stuff. It's perfectly fine. But I did have a customer a few years ago drove her CRV that was in much worse shape than this. The control arms were all worn out. Suspension was going out. She drove it from Houston to New Mexico and she was following a guy outside of San Antonio. She said, oh, they were doing over 100 miles an hour. He said, are you insane driving that thing 100 miles an hour with all those parts worn? And she just said, oh, it shook a little bit more, but it made it back and forth with no problems. And when you consider the amount of space that these things have, you pull the seats down, you got a lot of carrying room, and sure the console's the old dated Honda one and you know it's all black but I mean look at the seats 20 years old and that fabric's still in excellent shape even the armrest isn't worn out yet let's face it it's a solid beater little SUV very comparable to the RAV4 they each have their pluses and their minuses these are a little zippier than the RAV4s they handle a little better when they're new the RAV4s have a little bit cushier ride than these things do but they both can last a long time and if you can get a used one cheap that still runs they can be great beater cars and right, maybe your wife doesn't want to be seen in one because pieces are breaking off it but for your own beater car that you can take anywhere and not have to worry about somebody bashing into it or somebody stealing it because they want a hot car it's a great incognito beater small SUV this guy inherited it from his mother who was the original owner I got a lot of customers like that they don't want to take it out of the family because they're such well-made vehicles and here's some bonus questions and answers Jojo Amari 26 says I just bought a 2009 Pontiac Vibe at an auction it doesn't start it won't crank and the mechanic jump started it directly to the starter and it started up fine all right one don't ever buy a car at an auction especially when it doesn't start you know they push them or tow them through a lot of these auctions you never want to buy a car that doesn't run at an auction but I had a customer get something like that years ago it wasn't a Toyota it was a Chevy that the previous owner had hooked up an anti-theft system to it when the car was sold and it was an auction car too it didn't come with an anti-theft remote so when he told it to me I looked and said oh some idiot put an aftermarket system and all I did was remove the aftermarket system and then all the wires that they had cut I spliced them back in now it's not that hard to do because realize that all wires are car color coded so if they spliced wires and cut wires when you disconnected the old alarm that some clown had put in if it's on a yellow green wire you look for the other end of the yellow green wire and you splice them back together it's not like they're all white wires you gotta guess it's all color coordinated so it's not that hard to splice them back together again you would splice them solder them and then put a little heat shrink on it and heat it up with a hair dryer so it doesn't corrode or anything it's a pretty simple job once you find out where the stupid thing is hidden it's usually under the dash I mean oh yes it bonded says Scotty my 03 Toyota Corolla when I turn on the AC there's an awful smell like a dead rat in my blower well to look in there with a flashlight maybe a dead rat's in there I don't know generally what it is is you get mold and bacteria because mold and bacteria like two things they like nice humid damp areas where it's dark and guess what's inside the dash dark 
damp, humid areas. So, you know, there's lots of ways you can clean stuff. Uh, a simple thing is to just put your AC on full blast with outside air, not recirculate, but outside. Go to the front of the car and you'll hear under the windshield air sucked in. That's the intake. Spray a can of Lysol in there and then it'll kill the mold and bacteria. Uh, well, what, 99.9% .9 of it, right? The problem with mold and bacteria is they can multiply really fast. So even if you kill 99.9% .9 of them, hey, you're going to have to do it every few months or maybe once a month if you live in a real humid area because it'll keep coming back because it does breed fast. But generally, that's mold and bacteria. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.